All right. We are set and we are ready to go. Wait a minute. Glory, glory. 
coming soon. Amen. He's coming soon. Amen. And I want to uh, just extend a warm invitation to all of you that are viewing us, those of you that are local and those of you that are far off. We are inviting you all to attend our very first Intercessory Prayer Warriors Conference. And it's going to be held on the 29th, 30th, and the 31st of this month right here in Sacramento, California. Amen. And you are invited to be a part of it. Amen. So we're asking you to just go to, just look here on my Facebook, those of you on my Facebook, go to my Facebook. And for those that are that uh, not on my Facebook, the address is 2230 Auburn Boulevard, Sacramento, California, 95821. Amen. So write down that address. I either go to my website or go to my Facebook. We're going to, we're going to be up on my website uh, probably Monday. So uh, we want everyone that listens to us by the internet and those that are here, uh, man, we want you all to take part in this conference because it's going to be, it's going to be a, a supernatural prophetic utterance for this hour of intercessory prayer that God is calling us to. And God is going to speak to our hearts, and we are going to see the glory of God manifest among us. Amen. And we're also going to be ministering to the sick during this conference. Amen. Because I know that you don't, you, you don't teach on prayer without demonstrating. <laughs> Amen. And I've been seeing some people comments on, on, on the uh, Facebook and stuff. And, and so I just want you to know that we will be ministering not only on prayer, but we're going to be ministering on healing. Amen. We're going to demonstrate the Word of God. So we want you to come, expect a miracle if you have a need of a miracle, but mostly come and expect to hear from heaven. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be great. We have a, a prophet, a prophet, and a prophet coming from from San from San Jose. Some some good friends of mine. Amen. We have a, another pastor and his wife coming coming from San Leandro, California down in the uh, Bay Area, amen, so they're going to be helping us, they're going to be working with us uh, during this time, we invite you all to come on out and just be a blessing to the body of Christ by praying for them at the end of each service, and we want you to just come and be blessed yourself, amen, don't think that you're going to walk away the same way that you come in because you're not, because this is a, this is a supernatural empowerment that God is releasing upon us for intercessory prayer, prophetically inclined by God. Amen. So come and be a part of it. Amen. So we thank you all for that. And also we are been we started out teaching on a new beginning. Amen. First of the year. And we went through several aspects of walking into a new beginning. And we started on last Sunday, we started dealing with the new anointed, the fresh anointed. Amen. And so we're going to continue along that line today because I believe that this, when you walk into a new beginning, when you're stepping into a new place where you never walked before, you can't walk in that same, you can't walk into that place with that old stale anointing, amen, that, 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 that stale present that you operate in from uh, years that have come and gone. God wants you to come forth with a fresh and a new anointing, amen. Because you see, it's the anointing that lifts burdens and destroy yokes. And if we come uh, into this new beginning, expecting to ex experience a new anointing, then we got to we, we got to come expecting a fresh endowment from the Father above. Amen. Because you see, we're going to be we're going to experience new things. We're going to experience a uh, new uh, 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 hindrances. Things that try to block and stop you from going into your new beginning, and you're gonna need a fresh anointing to overcome in this area because the thief is out to steal, kill, and to destroy. Amen. But Jesus said, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. We're not moved by the circumstances or by what we see, amen, because we know that the God that we serve, He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask of things. So I want to encourage all of you, amen, to just open up your heart today and allow the Word of God 
to minister to you. Amen. To minister to your heart. Because we're dealing with, we're dealing with this area because I know that in order for me to, to continue to move into what God is calling me to move into, I'm going to need a fresh anointing. Amen. I'm going to need a fresh anointing. Not, not only is, going, is, is God going <clears throat> Not only is God giving us a, a fresh anointing, <clears throat> but it's going to be an end time prophetic anointing. An end time prophetic anointing. Amen. I, I don't know about you, but see, I love, how many of you know that God still speaks to people today? Amen. Are you believing that God still speaks to people today? Amen. So then you, then if you, if you truly believe that, then you know that when God speaks, Everything that you know, you can test what God said through the man that God spoke to by the results of what was spoken. Amen. Amen. So when God speaks, it always confirms. It always manifests. Am I right? Amen. Amen. I never declare something out of my head because God don't confirm things out of my head. He confirms out of my spirit. Out of my spirit. Because see my spirit is connected to him. Him and I are one. In the spirit. Not in the flesh. But in the spirit. Amen. And as we come together. As we come together to seek the face of God. We must realize that God. Is, have, he have a greater picture of where we are than what we can see. Amen. The way God sees things is a whole lot broader than the way we see it. Amen. So we need to understand what God is doing, what God is saying to us. Amen. Now, in the book of Luke, chapter 4, and verse number 18, I think, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Let me just turn there. I could, I could quote it, but I want, I'd rather read it to you because I want you to, to see it and read it yourself so that you can make this declaration in your own heart through the words of your own mouth, reading from the word of God. Amen. So it says in verse number 18. The spirit of the Lord. Is upon me. Because he had anointed me. To preach the gospel. To the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart. To preach deliverance to the captive. And recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty. Them that are bruised. And to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now notice what he said. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because he had what? Anointed me. Anointed me. I believe that I am anointed for what I'm for what we are sharing right now. I believe that I'm anointed for the things that, that the seeds that God has launched us in. Amen. There's an end time prophetic anointing that's going to rest upon this message. I'm letting you know right now. An end time prophetic anointing is going to rest upon this message. Because God is going to speak. To his people. Amen. And so many people need to be resensitized to the Spirit of God. And so God is going to prick your hearts. God is going to prick your hearts. And he's going to speak to some of your hearts even while we are sharing the message. Amen. Today and next week, next Sunday morning. He's going to speak to your heart because you see, God is going to get your attention one way or the other. It behooved you to pay attention to what the Spirit of God is saying. Amen. Now, glory to God. Amen. So there's going to be an end time prophetic anointing that's going to be released. And I believe that at this time, at this time, God is, God is, uh, God is uh, not only, he's, God is God's only way to, the only way we're going to, I'm going to say it like this. <clears throat> How many of you know there's many crises that has taken place in the earth? You know, we've been having a lot of floods, we had a lot of earthquakes, and uh, rumors of wars and all this stuff, and uh, hurricanes, amen, and, and all these disastrous uh, phenomena that has taken place. How many of you know that it's going to take, it's going to take uh, us seeking the face of God for the anointed to speak? into these atmospheres that's going to stop or protect us at the time of disaster, at the time of, uh, of uh, 
tribulation, trials and tribulation. Amen. So we we need this fresh anointing because you see, we're going, we're, we're headed deeper into the last days, preparing for the coming of the, the Messiah. Amen. He's coming soon. And we are going to be the ones that are going to usher him in at this time. God is arming you. He's strengthening you. He's empowering you for such a time as this. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so I want to, to encourage you. Because you see, there's a lot of people preaching, but a lot of people is leaving out the important things. Amen. Now, no one, not one of us is perfect. But you see, some of us has been given an assignment to declare and proclaim and to prophesy. Amen. And so as we as we enter into this time of the Word of God, there's going to be a fresh anointing, an end time prophetic anointing that's going to rest upon this teaching that we're doing. And also, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you this also. On the 29th, 30th, and 31st, there's going to be an end time prophetic empowerment for intercessory prayer. An end time prophetic empowerment for intercessory prayer. In other words, God is going to open your eyes of understanding that you will know what is the hope of his calling and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the workings of his mighty power. God is going to, God is, God is looking for someone that wants to be used in these last days. Someone that will stand for righteousness in these last days. God is looking for someone that will make up the hedge and stand in the gap before him for the land that he will not destroy. God is looking for someone that he can trust in these last days. And I'm going to ask you a question. Will he find that in your heart today? Amen. Shall he find that in your heart today? Because you see, God is looking. He's looking. Amen. And so he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart. Hallelujah. He has sent me to heal the broken heart to, to preach deliverance to the captive and recover sight to the blind and to set and live to those that are bruised and to do what? To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Folks, I want to I want you to know that this season that God has brought us into is a very crucial season. Amen. And it's a very, very uh, uh, needed season. Because see, there's a, an unstable world out there. And what I mean by unstable is that men and women uh, don't have an understanding uh, they, 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 uh, they know but they don't want to walk in the knowledge of who they really are and because of that the spirit of deception is working overtime to deceive them to even cause them to doubt who they how God created them from the, from the beginning uh, 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 of, of their gender amen they are so confused and and we have been given the anointing to declare, to proclaim, and to prophesy to the land and, to, and over our leaders of the land. And it's going to take the anointing, folks. It's going to take the, the anointing because, see, God is not only all brought, God is not only given us a new beginning, He's given the America a new beginning. He's given America a new beginning. He's given the church a new beginning. Amen. So we have been blessed by Almighty God to receive such a charge as this. We're in the last days. And God is moving right now. There's a release. There's a release in the spiritual realm of a fresh anointing. Hallelujah. I'm going to 
I'm going to say it again. There's a release in the spiritual realm from the throne room of God, a fresh outpouring of His Holy Spirit and the anointing that's going to lift burdens and going to destroy yokes. Then you need to be ready for it. You need to prepare your heart to receive it because it's already been released and we got to get in position to receive it. We have to get in position to receive it. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Now when we talk about the anointing, we talk about an, 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 an organ of, uh, I say, an organ of anointing. Amen. Was, the origin of anointing was, 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 found, was from the uh, practice of, of shepherds. The origin of anointing was practiced by shepherds. With, 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 their, with their sheep. They out with the sheep in the field and, and, the, and, the, and the birds and the, and the critters that, that's getting on in, in, the, in the sheep fur try to, it, it works its way all the way up to the to the head of the sheep and the, the, the things would go into the ears of the sheep and the sheep would die and so they began to pour the oil over the sheep's head so that when the, when the sheep would, when, the, when, the, when, the, when that bug would try to crawl into that sheep ear, that bug would not enter the sheep ear but would fall off because their oil caused that bug to, caused that sheep hair to be slippery, amen? And so the bug fell off. It did not enter into the sheep ear because if, if it entered into the sheep ear, it would eat its way into the sheep brain, into the sheep head, and the sheep would die. Amen. So the anointing was called. That's why. That's why we begin to. That's why we begin to talk about the anointing as a blessed anointing. Amen. That's why they started using it as blessed because it was a blessing that the shepherds were able to protect their sheep from the predators that were trying to destroy them in the fields. Glory to God. Am I making any sense to you? Amen. Because the anointing that God is releasing upon us today is to keep the predators away from your mind, away from your, 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 your thinking. God is releasing an anointing upon you that's going to cause you to be focused in these last days like you've never been focused before. Glory to God. Oh my God, that was anointed. <laughs> Amen. So the origin of the, the, origin of the anointing was from the, the practice of shepherds. Amen. Amen. Uh, and, 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 they, and they prepared, they, they was uh, they were watching over the sheep to keep the incense, incense because the incense would try to get into the ears of the lice, you know, lice and stuff like that. They would try to get into the ears of the sheep. And if, they, if they got into the ears, they would get into the head and the sheep would die. So that's the anointing that, 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 that came about. Amen. And so when we when they when they when they got in, when they got near the sheep head, uh, they they could burn them into they could burn into their sheep uh, 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 into the sheep ears and kill the sheep and so the ancient shepherds poured oil on the sheep's head. This made the wool slippery, making and making it impossible for the insect to get near the sheep's ears. Amen. To make it impossible for the insect to get near to the sheep ear because. The uh, incense would, 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 would slide off, amen, and fall to the ground. From, from this anointing, because uh, this, 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 anointing, this anointing became symbolically uh, to, uh, for, and, they, and they used that term for the anointing, it, it, it lifts burdens, destroy yokes, and it sets the captives free because the, the sheep was being held captive by the lice if they got into their ear because they couldn't get them out. They couldn't get them out. And because they couldn't get them out, the sheep would die. The sheep would die. And this, why, and this is what happened. The spirit of deception get into your ears. When the spirit of deception get into your ears, it began to drain you from life that God has intended for you to, to walk in. It began to drain you from the, from the strength that God intended for you to stand in. It began to drain you from the anointing that God calls you to stand in. Amen. Glory to God. Am I making any sense to you today? Amen. Because God intended for you. He intended.
intended for you and me to understand the hour that we are living in is very crucial. We cannot stand against the, 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 the powers of darkness in our strength. Amen. God has not told us to do that. He called us to stand, stand strong in Him. Stand strong in Him. And so when we look at this, we see also the anointed, okay, from, from, this, from this anointed because uh, symbolically a blessing, protection, and empowerment. The anointed is symbolized blessings, protections, and empowerment. The anointing, I'm going to tell you again, the anointing symbolized protection, blessings, and empowerment. Amen. So God is going to empower you to withstand the forces of darkness because of the anointing. The anointing is going to lift burdens and it's going to destroy yokes. Amen. It's going to lift burdens and it's going to destroy yokes. Amen. The New Testament Greek word for anointing is chiro, which means to smear, to rub with, to rub with oil. Amen. By an application of, and also to consecrate. You see, the anointing oil is used for different reasons different purposes. And so God has given you uh, a new beginning, but you need a new anointing for this new beginning because, see, God not only just gives you a new beginning, but He gives you a purpose for this new beginning. And in this purpose that you are perceiving from God in your spirit, there has to be a fresh anointing to help you to stand in, 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 to, uh, in, to stand in, in, in the purpose that God, has, has, that God has called you to for this hour. Amen? Because see, a lot of people are called, but few are chosen. And, they're, and because, they, uh, because they're not pursuing God through prayer and fasting, when God wants you to, uh, uh, to take a bold step of faith and to march out into the deep, you begin to look more at the circumstances rather than at God because you have not you have not armed yourself. You have not prepared yourself. You have not equipped yourself for the things that God is calling you to prepare yourself for, for 2017. 2017 represents a great deal to me. It, it means a great deal to me because I see the blessings of God in 2017. I see deliverance for the body of Christ in 2017. I see the peace of God is moving across, across the land again in 2017. And I see the heart of many souls. The heart of many souls are turning to the Lord in 2017. Amen. We are in a season, folks. We are in a time that we have to understand what God is saying and what God is doing. Because, see, no one, no one can stop this mighty moving force. The Bible tells us in the book of Joel chapter Joel chapter 2. Turn with me there please. The book of Joel chapter 2. Glory to God. Glory. In the book of Joel chapter 2. And let's look at verse number 1 first. Glory to his name. Are y'all with me today? Hallelujah. You said... And Joel chapter 2. Glory. There we go. There we go. He said, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountains. Let all the inhabitants of the land tr tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Folks, how many of you know that if the Lord is coming, that there's an enemy is trying to prevent it from coming? And you are the one that God has ordained to, to, to uh, set the pace. You're the one that God has ordained to, to prepare the way. You're the one that he's have, 
You're the one that he's looking to empower to, to be the light so that the world will see, know, and understand that the God that you serve, he's coming again. You still looking for the book of Job? Look right after the book of Hosea. Right after the book of Hosea. Amen. And that's page 1161 of my book. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. And then at verse number two, he said, a, a dark, a, a day of darkness and gloomness, a day of clouds and thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong, there had not been ever light. Neither shall be any more after it. Even to the years of many generations. See, God is raising you up. God is about to empower you with a fresh awareness of his presence. Because you see, he's coming soon and he's, and he's, and he's, and he, and he's given us the tools to stand in the midst of all that there is that are trying to interfere with the will of God for our lives. Because see, the Bible tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. So I want to encourage you today to, to, to read on down, with, go, go down to verse number 22, verse number 23, I mean. In verse number 23, the word of God said, in Old, uh, Joel chapter 2 and verse 23, be, th be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he had given you the former rain moderately, and will cause to come and will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. See, in the first month we began to teach on this new beginning. In the first month, God began to deal with our hearts about preparing for a new a new beginning. So with that new beginning, God has given us a new start, a new anointing, a fresh anointing. Because you see, you can't walk into what God is preparing you to obtain or to receive in 2017. Because you, see, but you can't use what the anointing from 2016, 2015 to receive what God has for you today. Because the thing that God has for you today is more great, greater than the things that you've already come through. See, if it didn't kill you back then, it strengthened you for, for the now. If it, if it wasn't uh, strong enough to kill you back then, then all it did was strengthen you for right now. Amen. Glory to God. Get about that flow, girl. Amen. God is looking at you, and he's looking at all of us, and he's calling us to stand our watch. He's calling us to stand our watch. He called us to watch and pray. Watch and pray. There's an anointing, folks. There's a prophetic anointing that God is releasing upon us, and it's going to be an anointing that's going to, that's going to uh, 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 push or uh, usher the people into God's new beginning. Notice what it says in verse number 24. And because you see, God is about to, God, he said the floor shall be filled with wheat. What that, that, that showed me that God is about to release a harvest. God's about to release an abundance of harvest upon you. Amen. I got to deal with this for a minute. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So when we, when, when God, as God is beginning to pour out into our lives, 
that we got to be ready. Because you see, there's an enemy will use anyone to take your attention off what God is doing. He don't care who he used. Amen? He doesn't care who he used. And so we have to understand that. We have to understand that. So he says right here in verse number 24, he said, and the floor, the floors shall be filled with what? Wheat. Wheat. Wheat represents food. Or bread. Bread represents what? Strength. Strength. God is about to pour his strength into you. The blessings that God has prepared for you to walk in is about to be revealed to your hearts. And as you begin to, as you continue to walk in this presence, as you continue to walk in this anointing, you're going to see that God is not a man that he shall lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Had he not said it, and shall he not make it good? I'm telling you, folks, God is going to reveal, he's going to expose, and he's going to bring forth a people in these last days that would have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and so I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you because, see, I see seven years of blessing. I see seven years of blessing. And God is releasing an anointing to receive the harvest of the blessing. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm telling you, I, I, you know, when I see when I, when I, when I see all the rain we've been, we've been having, how many of you know that, that the farmers won't have no problem with their crops this year? Because there's plenty of, there's plenty of water. Amen. You know what that means? Prosperity. Glory to God. Abundance. See, God's not only going to deal with us from the spiritual standpoint, but he's dealing with us from a natural standpoint. Because I, I like what Dr. Cirillo said. We live in a parallel world. When the blessing begins to pour out in the spirit, the blessing begins to pour out in the natural. The rain that we're experiencing is just like the, a former rain and a latter rain. The blessing is about to begin to multiply because the earth is being, uh, being moist by the water that is coming in. The soul is being washed by the spirit that has been poured in. And the, 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 the spring is about to come where the, 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 the seed is going to begin to germinate. It's going to begin to, going to, begin to uh, uh, grow. And we're going to begin to see the harvest in, in, the, in, the fall, in, in, the, in the fall of the year. We're going to see a harvest like we've never seen before. You, you know why? Because see, God is doing something. Oh, and, I, and, and, and let me tell you what I see. I'm going to tell you what I see in the spirit. I see pestilence are trying to come in. I see pestilence are trying to interfere with what God want to do. This is the work of the enemy. And God said, not so. God said, not so. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. <laughs> they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God of us shut up. There's an anointing, folks, that God is releasing that's going to bring you to a place of a new beginning with a fresh anointing. With a fresh anointing. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. And so he goes on to say in verse number 20, in verse number, verse number 24, he says, And the floor and the floor shall be filled with wheat, and the vest shall overflow with what? With wine. With wine. With oil and wine. Wine and oil. Amen. Oil and wine. Wine and oil. Amen. What does, what does the, uh, the, the wine represent? Huh? The wine represents the blood. The blood. The oil represents what? The new anointing. The new anointing. Are you ready? 
for what God is wanting to do right now. Are you ready to open up your heart and expect God to speak to you like he's never spoke before? God is going to speak, folks, and he's going to move. Amen. Verse number 25 says, and I will restore. See, there's a spirit of restoration coming. There's a spirit of restoration coming in this new anointing. There's a spirit of restoration coming in this new anointing. Glory to God. How many can use restoration today? Glory to God. He said, I will restore to you. In other words, God said, I'm going to restore to you everything that the enemy has stolen from you. I'm going to restore to you everything that the locust, the cake worm, the caterpillar, the palm worm have eaten. Restoration, folks, is cut. We're in a time of a new beginning. Fresh anointing for the abundance. Because Jesus said, I come that you may have what? Life. And that you may have it more abundantly. Amen. The church is a, has arrived to the finest hour. But you're not going to experience the blessings that God intends you to experience if you are not seeking his face. You're going to see the blessing upon others. But if you want to see the blessing upon you, you got to get in line. In other words, you got to line up. Because he said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon what? All flesh. Now, depends on the measure of your lining up, how much of the presence that you're going to be exposed to. Because the anointing is coming. The anointing is coming. God is already releasing it. God is already releasing it. Amen. And so he said, and I will restore to you the years that the locust, the can the, the, the locust has eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palm worm, my great army, which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. See, I, 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 I when I see that. I see, I see a, a great harvest coming for you. I see abundance. I see a, I see a spirit of abundance that's being released upon you. And that's why, folks, we must open up our heart for this fresh anointing that God is releasing upon the body of Christ. Amen. Because you see, the anointing is going to protect your harvest. Glory to God. Glory to God. And I know that some of you are believing God for, for, for things that you never that you 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 you, you, you never you never even got yet. Amen. Amen. Some of you believe in God for things that you that, that only you you know and, and maybe one or two other people know about. Amen. And some of you believe in God for things that only you and God know about. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. God said to us today, He said, Be still and know that I am God. The battle is not yours, but the Lord's. Ooh, glory to God. My, 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 my. Mm. I feel like jumping up and running in this place, boy. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. And so God is, God is preparing us and he's, he's letting us know that the anointing is for a purpose, a specific purpose. See, God, when God releases a fresh anointing, He doesn't release an anointing just because you, you, you've been praying. He releases the anointing because He has an assignment for the anointing. The anointing is being released on an assignment. <coughs> and you have been given an assignment 
And in order for you to accomplish that assignment, you got to have a fresh anointing. That old stale anointing from last year is not going to carry you through. Amen. And you, a lot of you have already found that out already. A lot of you have already found that out already. Because you see, when you, when, you, when, you first start, when you first start coming around, the devil is trying to destroy you. Then all of a sudden, you come under this, this anointing. You come under this anointing, all of a sudden, your life begins to take on new headings. I mean, your whole life begins to change. Amen. And now God is bringing us into a deeper change this year because this year is going to be a year of multiplication. This year is going to be a year of multiplication and an abundance of multiplication. I come that you may have life and that you might have it more abundantly. The anointing, folks, is going to make room for you. The anointing it's going to make room for you. Amen. Amen. Glory to his name. Amen. So when we look at the anointing, again, we see that it, the, 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 trio, the trio, C-H-R-I-O, which means to smear, the anointing, to anoint means to, to smear. Amen. To rub with oil. By applications to consecrate for office. Notice what it said to consecrate for office. Our religion, service. Amen. Which means to anoint in the to anoint in the Bible, people were anointed with oil by, by, by signifying God's blessings are called on the person's life. So the oil represents the oil represents more than just one thing. It represents several things, folks, and so we need to we need to, we need to understand that. Amen. I want you to look at the book of Exodus, chapter 29. Exodus 29. Glory to God. I know what God is saying. This is how many how many how many get anything out of this day? Exodus 29. And look at first them up. Right, let me see first. Verse number seven. Hallelujah. And it says, Then shalt thou take the anointing oil and pour it upon the head and anoint him. And, shall, and thou shalt bring his sons and put coats upon them. Amen. So we see the anointing is for service. It's for service. Amen. And then we look again in, 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 in chapter 40, Exodus chapter 40. Just a few more pages over. <clears throat> I'm, I, I, we're going to be having communion in a few minutes. So those of you that are going to be having communion with us, get your, get your elements ready, your juice and your cracker ready. We're going to be having communion in just a few minutes. Amen. And you can, we want you to take, have communion with us if you desire. Number, uh, Exodus chapter 40. And let's see verse number Verse number nine. And thou shalt take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is therein and shall hallow it and all the vessels thereof and it shall be holy. Holy. So the anointing consecrates and set apart. Amen. The anointing consecrates and set apart. Amen. And now let's go. To, let's look at another uh, Ecclesiastes. Y'all know what that one is. 
Ecclesiastes, right after Proverbs. And I want us to look at chapter 9. Glory to God. And I want us to look at chapter 9. Hallelujah. And verse number 8. Please answer chapter 9, verse number 8. He said, let the garment be always white, and let the head lack no what? Ornament. Let the head lack no ornament. Amen. Y'all got that? And then let's go now to the book of James, chapter 5. Right after the book of Hebrew, James, chapter 5. And let's look at verse number 14. Very familiar passion of Scripture. And it says, If any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray the and let them pray over him and do what? Anointing. Anointing him with what? With oil. In the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall do what? Save the sick. So oil has been used in several, in several ways. It can be used in many different ways. Remember in the sheep? The sheep, they put the oil on the sheep to, to help to keep the, the lights from killing the sheep, getting in the ears and killing the sheep. Amen. The oil is placed on a, the, the anointing oil is placed on a, on, a, on, a, on a servant of God for, for, for office that he's standing, for the service that God has called him for. Amen. And we see that the anointing is placed on God in, 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 in so many ways. Consecrate us. Separated, set, set us apart for God's purpose, and, not, and then God calls you what? God calls you what? Then He calls you holy. He calls you holy. Amen. So God is looking at us, and He's asking us to prepare ourselves, to arm ourselves, to receive. This prophetic in time anointing that has been released from the presence of Almighty God upon the house of God today. Glory to God. There's an anointing, folks. And God is preparing us to receive the fullness of the anointing. The fullness of the anointing. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. I, I, I got plenty more I could, I could add with this, but we can't go no more with this. We got to change the subject right now because it's time for us to go into our next order of service. Today is the first Sunday of the book of the month of March, the book. <laughs> My life is a book, yeah, we're right. Amen. So today is the first Sunday of the month of March. Amen. And, and it's time for us to prepare for communion. Glory to God. It's time to prepare for communion. I want to turn your attention to the book, 1 Corinthians, chapter 11. First Corinthians, chapter 11. I'm not going to keep you long. Oh, I wish, 
I could preach more on that anointing because that's a that's a, that's a powerful subject. Powerful. Amen. But I gotta do what has to be done. Amen. So now, as we are as we're looking at this, I want to you to uh, prepare your heart for the uh, new anointing, even in our communion. Even in our communion. Amen. And so, the Bible says in verse number, in chapter 11, verse number 23, it says, For 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show forth the Lord's death till it come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for allowing us the privilege to examine our hearts. Can you go get my wife outside, baby? Thank you. And as we prepare, Father, to examine our hearts for this holy occasion, we are asking, Father, that you would supernaturally move in our midst, revealing your strength and your glory among us. And Father, I thank you in advance because I know, Lord God, that it's in you that we live and move and have our being. We bless you and we glorify you. There's nothing we can do apart from you, Father. So we acknowledge our need today of inner peace, a peace of mind. We thank you for it now. And so, Father, I bless your people in Jesus' name. Glory to his name. Okay. As we see this right here, this is a cracker. But in a minute, I'm going to bless this. I'm going to sanctify this. And it's going to be transformed from not 
just a cracker or a piece of bread, but it's going to be transferred, transformed to the body, the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His body was broken with straps going across his back, 40 to 39 lashes going across his back, and his back was broken open. And because of that, we can obtain healing. Because Jesus allowed strap to be put across his back to open his skin. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. There's a healing element that's already been declared and released into this holy communion element. This is no longer a piece of bread, but it is now the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, I bless this. I thank you for it now. In the name of Jesus. Not only do we declare the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus blessed, but we declare, Father, that as we partake of his broken body, that we will partake of his healing that was released because of his broken body. And we shall obtain our healing today because you said, God, in your word that you sent your word to heal us. And Jesus been the form of the word walking in the earth taking on flesh we beheld his glory as of the only begotten Son of God. And today we receive of His presence His healing power. And Father, I pray for this dream. I hold it up before you, Father, and I sanctify it, Lord, that it may be used for your kingdom and for your glory. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. For you have redeemed us from the curse of the law through the blood. You have redeemed us from the spirit of poverty through the blood. You have redeemed us from sicknesses and diseases through the blood. The spiritual death through the blood. From the generation of curses through the blood. Father, we declare that this cup is now declared holy, holy, holy. For it was the blood that washed away our sin. It was the blood that made me free from the penalty of sin. It was the blood that redeemed me. It was the blood that delivered me. It was the blood that made me free. I thank you for the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.
Brother, will you please come? Minister Murphy. Can you please take the bread and the, the drink? Make sure everyone has it. And we're going to all take it together. You that are with us by the internet, we're going to all take it together. Father, this bread represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This blood represents your blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. We receive it and we bless it now in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Everyone is going to eat together. We're not, we're going to, we're not going to eat separate. We're all going to eat together. Amen. You that are with us by the end of the day, you got your communion ready? We're going to all eat together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Let me serve you, brother. Oh, the blood of Jesus.
Father. We receive our rightful position in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, let us drink. For he is Lord, he is Lord, he has risen from the dead, and he is Lord, every knee shall bow, and every tongue come. Amen. For as long as the earth bend, it's always been seed time and harvest. 
So we consider this as good ground. Amen. And we want you to consider this as good ground. We ask you to plant your seed. Sow your best. Amen. Help us with this conference that we that is coming up. Sow, sow a significant seed toward this conference. Amen. You that are with us by the internet, go use your ATM card, your credit card, go to my website and sow a significant seed toward this conference. You may, you may never have given before to this ministry, but God is dealing with your heart right now, and He's, and he's giving you an amount to sow. Go ahead on and sow that seed, and know that God has spoken to your heart. Every seed that you sow is tax deductible. Amen. It's tax deductible. We are a non-profit co corporation, non-profit organization. So as you sow your seed, we will send you a tax right now. So make sure you leave all your information. Amen. So we can get that information to you. And you that are going to be sowing through the mail, write your check, make it payable to Lambert Ministries. That's P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Again, that's Library Ministries, P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Amen. Pretty soon we're going to make it possible so that you can sow your seed through a text message. Amen. We're going to make it possible so you can sow your seed through a text message. Amen. So that way you don't have to go to find my website. You can just you, you right there with your card, you just make your phone call, and there you go right there, your seed is gone. Amen. Your seed is gone. Just that fast. And God is going to be glorified because you released that seed. Amen. I'm already checking into that technology. And we believe it's going to be made available for us. And so now, everybody give them one to give. What, what happened to name? Something in that envelope. Oh, well, you, you, you gave him something to somebody to put something in. Give him an empty envelope. Oh. Jesus' name. 
Amen and amen. Well, glory to God. My name is Pastor Lambert. I've enjoyed bringing you the word of God today. I know God has spoken to our heart. And if you need to go back and listen to this message a second time, maybe even a third time, I encourage you to do so. Amen. It's online. It's going to be on YouTube. It's going to be on Facebook. It's going to be on, on uh, uh, Google+. Plus. It's going to be on several places. So you, you just put my name in the browser. You can find this message. It's going, to be, it's going to be a lot of places on the internet. So we thank God for you guys. Thank you all for joining us. Let us all stand. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the people that have come today, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for those that are with us by the internet. We ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would breathe upon your people that fresh anointing. And we declare, Father, today that we receive of the outpouring of this new beginning. And the purpose of the anointing will be fulfilled in our lives. We thank you. We bless you. And we give you glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. This is Pastor Larry. Have a good day. Bye-bye.